everybody. Welcome to ADA Inside Track, the podcast that's like reading in your car, but safer. I'm your host, Robert Perry Cruz, here to celebrate our December 2022 preview with my fabulous co-host. Hey, Rob, it's Diana. Hey, just one fabulous co-host today. Still Check. fabulous. Still fabulous. Yes. So we are recording our preview episode to let everyone know what's coming out on this podcast about behavior analysis and behavior analytic research this December. And we've got a lot going on. It's a busy, busy month. So we're very, very happy to tell you about what you have to look forward to, as well as talk about a few other you know, fun bits of information related to the show. So, Dinah, it's December, which means in our family, we, we celebrate Christmas, and uh, I thought we'd do a little secret Santa, so oh, um, I, won't no. tell you, I won't tell you which name I Not picked prepped. out, but uh, look, someone left you a gift. I don't know who could have gotten this gift oh, for you. Oh my goodness, what you could it You want to open it? Yes. Okay, what did, you, what did you get? Wow, that's some great audio. You clearly are opening a present. Oh my goodness, it's a book! What book is How it? How did you know? I love books. It is a book called Between Now and Dreams Ooh. by Shayla Ali Rosales and Peggy Heinkel Wolf. Wow. Oh my goodness. How did you know that I wanted to? Well, how did you book? know it was me? I might not have been it's your secret Santa. It's all about responsible and responsive parenting. Ooh. Your secret Ooh. Santa knows you so well. This is an exciting find, Rob. Yeah. I can't wait to read it. That's good. I'm glad you can't wait to read it because <laughs> I have some other exciting news what for you, Diana. It? Well, one of the activities, not coming out quite yet, but just to give people a little preview, is uh, coming up in January, we're going to be doing our winter book club. And guess what book we'll be reading? Is it possibly Between Now and Dreams? Surprisingly, no. Or not. Yes, it is. It is Between Now and Dreams. We will be reading all about that. The topic was parenting. Uh, parenting. So we looked at some parenting uh, books. We put up a choice of three on our Patreon website because oh, uh, it's something special for our Patreon subscribers. They can vote on our book club episode. So uh, this was the winner by a pretty, pretty good amount. And so we will be discussing that. Now that's going to be in January. But again, one of the things with the book is it takes more than a week or two to read sometimes. So uh, for folks who are interested in hearing that discussion, well, it's going to be coming out only for patrons. So uh, if you have not subscribed at patreon.com slash ABA Inside Track, you may want to. Or you could just read the book for fun and then maybe ask us if you ever see us in person what we thought of it too. I guess that is another alternative. So this book, is, not to deter anyone, but it does have 300 pages to it. However, mm -hmm. the pages are like half the size of a normal page. It is an adorable book. It is adorably small. If you were wearing a... Uh, Jenko jeans, you mm -hmm. could put this in the pocket. Yes. Not Probably not like a Levi's pocket, I wouldn't think. They're not going to fit in my skinny jeans? Mm -mm, not quite. It's not like a moleskin notebook. It's not no. quite that small. Uh, but if you had a larger a larger trouser, you could probably get this in the pocket. Well, for anyone who says that uh, behavior analysts don't know how to uh, market... Dress. To, uh, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> don't know how to market to, uh, to uh, non-behavior analysts. I mean, a book about parenting. This looks like a book that, like, you know what? You should pick this up, parents. This this looks really... Yeah, the cover's adorable. It's really cute. Yeah, it's really cute. The content's been amazing so I far. I've not content. finished it yet. I've just been, been gifted this book that kind of looks like it's already been read. I mean, to be quite honest you know, it you. might be a re-gift. I'm not oh, sure. Huh. Interesting. <laughs> Okay. So that's one of the things coming up. And if you were saying Patreon, I don't know about that. Well, don't forget, for patrons only, this Sunday, December 4th, which again, if you are getting this on the Patreon feed, you get this ahead of time. If not, you missed it. I'm sorry if you're on the regular feed because these come out a week later. We're going to be doing another live episode, also voted on by patrons. And Dinah, what is the topic of our live episode? We're going to talk about using visual supports. Very nice. So if you have subscribed on the Patreon feed uh, at uh, patreon.com slash ABA Inside Track, you can join us for a live episode on Sunday, December 4th from 5 to about 6 o'clock. We'll be talking about visual supports, and you can earn 1CE for doing so. No additional charge. Just being a member of our Patreon family is all it takes. And uh, if you're getting this a little late, like maybe you joined the Patreon after you heard about this, don't worry, the video will also be available for folks who want to see it so that you'll be able to uh, get that free CE as well as listen to the episode ahead of time. And if you're still like, I don't love Patreons, that sounds 
something I don't want in my life, totally fine. That episode will also be coming out in January. So you have plenty of opportunities to hear our mellifluous voices talk on a bunch of topics. So those are kind of the special topics we have that are either coming soon or coming this month. But Diana, what are our main topics? What are the main topics we'll be talking about this month? Sure. So we have two main episodes that will be coming out in the month of December. And the first one is uh, one in which we have a special guest joining us. So Dr. Dorothea Lerman is going to join us to talk about training professionals outside of the field of behavior analysis using behavior analytic techniques. We'll probably shorten the title. <laughs> what the title I just gave was very long, mm -hmm. so I think it's called something else. Uh, but there's two articles that we're going to talk about. Training other professionals. Sure. Is the title. I just started making the website, so that that's what it will be. Other professionals. <laughs> other professionals. <laughs> because they're professionals. Choice D. Other. Well, they're professionals, but I think when we train, we're always talking about who we're training. Other behavior analysts, teachers, yeah. paraprofessionals, yeah, yeah. parents. Did I say parents twice? Uh, I honestly they're, don't know. They're, they're super important, so it's okay if I say that twice. Uh, but this is going to be about what, what about if you're training everybody else in the world who works with autistic individuals and may need to support them and behaviors you that are... You can actually train people to do all sorts of other things as well. Well, that's true, so but that's articles, specifically what right, we're talking about. These articles about. Are, are related in that sense. So uh, there's two of them. The first is titled, Preparing Law Enforcement Officers to Engage Successfully with Individuals with Autism Spectrum Disorder, an Evaluation of a Performance-Based Approach by Hinkle and Lehrman. That was published in the Journal of Autism and Developmental Disorders pretty darn recently, maybe in 2021. 2021. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And then uh, we will also talk about an article titled Remote Training of Dental Students and Professionals to Promote Cooperative Behavior in Patients with Intellectual and Developmental Disabilities. And that is by Mattiucci, Lehrman, Sami, and Boyle. That was in the Journal of Developmental and Physical Disabilities 2022. All right. Mm -hmm. So that's happening. <laughs> there's, only, there's two in that one. I have to navigate to my other web, uh, my other page here. And then the other topic that we have for a full-length CEU available episode for December is revisiting video modeling and talking about video modeling variations. So uh, uh, if you are a longtime listener, then you will recall that episode 23 was talking about video modeling. Here we are, episode 226, going back to revisit video modeling. And when you hear this episode, you will hear me say multiple times, oh, and we also should talk about that. So there is enough material that we could do a whole third episode on video modeling and its variations. There's just so much to discuss. Maybe episode uh, 429, we'll come back to that. <laughs> that's right, every 203rd episode we do <laughs> video modeling. Yep, that's the way we do it. That's the way we do it. Um, so we, we uh, again, I only narrowed it down to four articles for this episode that we discussed, but they are as follows. Enhancing conversation skills in children with autism via video technology, which is better, self or other as a model, by Scherer, Pierce, Paradis, Kisaki, Ingersoll, and Schreibman. That was published in Behavior Modification back in 2001. Then we will talk about teaching daily living skills to children with autism through instructional video modeling. That was by Shipley, Benamu, Lutzker, and Taubman, published in Journal of Positive Behavior Interventions, 2002. So a couple of, a couple of these were in the Wayback Machine. Then we will discuss strategies for teaching children with autism to imitate response chains using video modeling by Tereshko, McDonald, and Ahern, published in Research in Autism Spectrum Disorders, 2010. And rounding it out, Teaching Daily Living Skills to Seven Individuals with Severe Intellectual Disabilities, a Comparison of Video Prompting to Video Modeling by Canella Malone, Fleming, Chung, Wheeler, Baz Bigel, and Singh. And that was in the Journal of Positive Behavior Interventions, 2011. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So those are our main episodes that we will have. But because it is December and because we are... Uh, quickly barreling toward the new year. We will also do our end of the year uh, roundup and reflection with our good friend Matt Chikoria from the Behavioral Observations podcast. And we can, uh, you can hopefully expect to see that come out right at the end of the year. So we don't usually do a full length episode for the 
last week of the year. Everybody's usually taking a break, hopefully getting some rest and relaxation in, spending some time with family members, which we also do as well. So we will just do that little um, recap there. It's usually like a fun listen mm -hmm. with Matt. That's going to be great. Yeah, we're going to have the whole crew here, and we'll have Matt, and we'll have a grand old time looking back on the year that was 2022. And so those are the episodes and the events coming up. We've got full-length episodes, live episodes, bonus episodes, and an episode to be recorded in the future. Let's move into the errata section of the show. This is the section where we talk about other topics, not necessarily directly related to episodes that we are recording. Uh, we're going to start with, uh, for folks who've been watching or listening a long time, you know, we usually do these episodes as uh, videos. Uh, we found a lot of other ways to do videos, though. So we sort of decided to hold off and maybe pause and maybe never do again sort of preview <laughs> videos because they take a long time to make, a lot longer than doing the recordings. And perhaps that's time that could be better spent getting other episodes ready. And the way that social media likes to take your videos is um, if you just... They like to take them and bury them in a dark, dark place. Yep, so no one can even find them. Yeah. So we have other ways that we get these posted on, on YouTube. Uh, we have ways that we can sort of post things in social media with small clips. So we are going to see if that makes a change. Because again, we liked making the videos, but it takes a very long time to sync up audio and video and add little effects. And if it's not really adding to kind of the general in information that we're handing out, it's the UX. Of, yeah, it's kind of just work. Uh, so... It was fun, but we're gonna we're gonna try not doing them. So if you were like, no, but I love those videos and seeing my my ABA Inside Track friends, please write in and tell us. Please do the videos again because we'll do them again if that's the case. My guess is we will get zero emails about nah. this, which on the one hand is a little sad, but oh well, we'll save we'll save time from from video production to you know get get another crop of episodes going. I suppose. Um, so that's that's some sort of personal news for us. Um, some very sad news that uh, we wanted to share and we'll certainly be talking about at our end of year presentation is uh, we were informed recently of the sad passing of Tamika Meadows. Uh, it was it sounded like it was very sudden. Uh, we were all very shocked. She was uh, scheduled to speak at the BABA conference this year as one of their keynote speakers. Um, we had, she was on our show, uh, episode 160, talking about incorporating unique interests of clients into planning, uh, but with someone who even before then was just, uh, out there writing about ABA on her, I love ABA blog was reached, reached out to us way back. I think almost when we'd started the show with you know, words of encouragement. Um, so, you know, we were, we were fans of hers uh, and we were very, very sad to hear about her passing. Um, so we'll be talking more about that on uh, the end of year episode as well. But I don't think it, it hurts to share the sad news uh, as many places as possible. Because I think folks who do not know her, uh, you should definitely go look at some of her old posts or maybe listen to that old episode to get a sense of what a, an amazing person she was. So with that sad news, let's move into the last section of the show. We're going to talk about some emails that we received about episodes that we've done in the past. If you're interested in writing to us, we always love hearing from listeners. You can write us at abainsidetrack at gmail.com with thoughts, ideas for episodes, or like many of these people did, some addenda to the episodes that we did. So uh, the episodes that we had uh, kind of gotten, you know, a, a lot of information from were on facilitated communication and ADHD. So we had two on facilitated communication. One was from uh, Sari, I believe it's pronounced Sari, who is a BCBA SLP, who wrote to us to talk a little bit about uh, a slight error. I'm gonna read a little bit of the, of the email, though not the whole thing, uh, but we did the whole episode on facilitated communication. And Sari writes, it was mentioned a couple of times that while inappropriate for individuals with ASD, FC is appropriate for individuals with CP. This is incorrect. First, many individuals with CP who need AAC would be able to use direct selection with physical touch. Second, for those individuals with CP whose motor impairments impede their ability to use direct selection, alternative access would be the most appropriate choice. It's important for these individuals to be able to communicate independently. Relying on a facilitator to hold a part of their body would both bring authorship into question, as well as require this individual to wait for a facilitator to be available before communicating. Um... And then uh, Sari shared a, uh, a link 
to uh, communicationscommunity.com uh, and kind of a, a link to suggest uh, or, or to share um, some explanation of what alternative access means. So for folks who are interested in learning a bit more about what that would be. Uh, and uh, there's also a mention of a citation for Buchelman and Miranda, which is an SLP book. So again, not everyone is going to have access to this book, but says uh, does a great job really describing AAC uh, and, and types of AAC that could be used for a variety of individuals with different uh, needs and disabilities. Um, again, uh, sorry, just really wanted to make sure no BCBA thought that FC was appropriate to use with individuals with CP or any other individual who cannot use direct physical selection. So just wanted to make sure that we clarified that. And so we want to say thank you, sorry, for clarifying that. Yes, we do not believe in the use of facilitated communication for anyone, but we definitely appreciate that you uh, have you know, felt that wasn't clear in the episode, and then also shared some great resources uh, where people could learn more about other types of AAC, because we didn't get into that as much in the episode. So very nice to hear more. We haven't done an AAC episode. We did, it was episode a long, 22. Yeah, no, I was gonna say, we haven't done one in a long time. I think we're hitting our 200. Oh, well, it's just, it was back when we did video modeling. <laughs> yes. So we, we, we were- We could certainly revisit that, and there are so many different types of AAC. Um, out there, and so we'd never meant to indicate that facilitated communication is appropriate. I think I was trying to uh, discuss where it may have started from, but certainly there are other uh, methods out there that would not impede the independence and the autonomy of the person who's speaking, and that's the most important piece. And mm -hmm. facilitated communication has proven time and again that it does not allow for that, and it does call into question the ownership of the words, and that's not at all what we would be purporting or supporting um, for any individual. Mm -hmm. So my apologies. We also had another email about facilitating communication. I'm not gonna use the name of the person who wrote it because I'm not sure if uh, they wanted that, if they wanted that public, but they actually were, uh, they thanked us for making the episode and let us know that they were one of the facilitators whose story was featured on the Frontline Prisoner of Silence uh, episode. So are speaking from personal experience, they shared some of their own kind of, you know, reactions to the piece to finding out the facilitated communication did not work. Uh, and, you know, some of the pressures that they, uh, they had to deal with when they started to question and advocate against the use of FC and how that was very challenging. Um, so it was uh, very interesting to get that email. Um, and they also shared some information about current day facilitated communication um, that uh, Rosemary Crossley invented, and there's quotes around invented, facilitated communication in Australia, uh, and that there were other forms of facilitated communication uh, that go back to the 70s that uh, were discovered and then debunked. Again, both of those in quotes, but again, Crossley is the person who was given credit for popularizing facilitated communication. Uh, Douglas Bicklin, who I don't remember, I think we mentioned oh, at, yeah. at one point, but just specifying that uh, was that was at Syracuse University, who met Crossley and then brought FC to the United States. And the Facilitated Communication Institute at Syracuse is still there under a different name uh, after 2010 because they wanted to, quote, fly under the radar after a bunch of bad press. It's now called the ICI. Uh, there were We talked a little bit about allegations regarding abuse uh, and says that there were lots of allegations, more than the ones that we sort of you know loosely referred to in our episode uh, that are not always covered in the press, uh, including Rosemary Crossley and eight of her trained facilitators in 1992, where there were false allegations against them or, or from them, um, that there was uh, someone at Rutgers who was convicted of sexual assault on a person with disabilities. Uh, who uh, continues to, whose parent was a first generation facilitator that still promotes the use of FC. Um, so again, a, a lot of cases in which FC was used uh, as part of a crime, which is very, very sad to hear. And that there are still places uh, like the University of Virginia and Cal Lutheran who uh, are actively promoting FC. Uh, and have new guidelines to be a facilitator. So now if you want to be a facilitator, you have to go to a bunch of FC workshops to practice your technique, which again, uh, the writer mentions, well, if you're just practicing something that doesn't work and is a flawed technique, it doesn't make it any less flawed. So uh, thank you for writing in. It was, it was so nice to take your time and share your story. So thank you so much. Um, and they do they do uh, recommend a, a place that they that they post and other people post sort of advocating against FC uh, facilitated communication.org um, 
So you can check that out if you want to hear some more information about facilitated communication and debunking of facilitated communication. All right. And finally, we had an email about our episode on ADHD. And this was uh, from Allie, who starts by saying that she really enjoys uh, the podcast. Now she can get CEUs from the podcast, which is always nice to hear. We, we never get tired of people saying, hey, we like the thing you guys make every week. Um, who wanted to sort of share her own experiences as a parent of children with ADHD and as a BCPA and to sort of bring up a couple points that we either maybe glossed over or did not clarify as well as we should have in the episode uh, speaking about uh, ADHD and a lot of ADHD stereotypes, many of which we either mentioned or inadvertently shared or uh, sort of subscribed to on the show itself. Uh, sort of talking about some things that uh, we said that parents should do, but also some things that parents should do that maybe they shouldn't do. Um, Again, I think a lot of it having to do with the challenges in terms of, well, behavioral interventions are great. Uh, We were down, we we were a bit down on the use of medication and sort of one of the the challenges in that behavioral interventions and medication can be used together, together. That is a lot easier to get medication than it is to get behavioral interventions for a child with ADHD. And so, so making that recommendation could be very frustrating to families who might struggle to then follow that recommendation, even if they wanted to do it. Um, the idea that medication would ever be used as a quick fix rather than potentially as a meaningful component in a treatment package. Uh, and, you know, again, a lot of the challenges when uh, you are working with families who are struggling with getting a new diagnosis on making sure that we ensure that we have enough humility that we don't understand everything and that we have to understand the context of the family that we are working with to make sure that we don't inadvertently uh, frustrate folks with recommendations that can't be carried out or by implying that something that we might not recommend is our top choice or that might not be uh, seen in some of the research that we're discussing implies that the decision that they might have made to follow one of those other alternatives like medication would therefore be a bad decision or something that could harm their child. Certainly not being the goal of anything we said in there, but we do appreciate when we get that feedback from listeners. Um, and I think uh, Jackie had written back sort of to discuss, you know, you know, for, for us as hosts of the show within our families, we have had to, you know, work with individuals with ADHD And certainly our goal was never to say that medication was not ever useful or couldn't be a part of a treatment package. And if that was in any way, you know, if if that was stated or uh, someone listening got the idea about that, we wanted to just clarify that that was not our intent. And we apologize if it you know, brought back certainly any memories of another professional in the past saying, hey, you're doing it wrong, um, which is something Ali mentioned. Like that is something hard for parents to hear, the sense that when you work with lots of professionals, the odds that someone makes you feel like you're doing parenting wrong is is really hard to hear and really hard to have to feel. So we were very glad that she uh, reached out and shared some of her own experiences and some of the ways that we were not as inclusive as we could have been. So thank you very much for doing that, Ali. We really appreciate it. Yeah, you need to do what works for you and your family. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be different for everyone. It's going to be different for each child. So we weren't intending to say you can't use medication or you should only use behavioral treatment because it's really going to vary child to child what's best for them and what's really going to work. And you should do what works. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's always tough because when we do these episodes, we're coming with a focus on we're going to talk about these research papers, but we're also bringing our own histories and our own clinical practices and our own biases in there. And while on the one hand, we want people to feel comfortable that when they listen to us talk about articles, we are coming at them with an objectivity to the article. And we're also bringing expertise that we hope adds to the discussion of the article. That doesn't mean that we may not uh, speak about something that maybe we just have an opinion on and not necessarily couching it as say an opinion or something that was very specific to a very, you know, set moment in time from our own past. Uh, So making sure that we always clarify that because we do want people to feel that listening to the show is something that is additive to discussing and learning about the research rather than just our strong opinions on a matter. That's not the point of the show. So, all right, well, we had a lot of fun things to talk about. I mean, some not fun things to talk about as well. And a but lot important to talk things. about. Let's a lot. That. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> leave it. A lot. Yeah. Who needs the extra adjective? 
We want to thank everyone for listening. We hope you are looking forward to what's coming up in December. Uh, don't forget, there are a lot of ways that you can get the show. If you're not already subscribing on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, wherever you like to get your podcasts, please do so. We also love it when people leave us reviews or write to us at abainsidetrack at gmail.com. If you want to get a list of all of the episodes we've ever done, go to abainsidetrack.com where you can find links to all of the episodes, many of which apparently we're revisiting 200 episodes later in yeah, the coming including ADHD months. as well, because we did yes. that one episode 16. Wow! Yeah. More than 200 episodes. Uh, and also, if you're interested in purchasing CEs, you can do that there. We're on all the socials as ABA Inside Track. And if you want to get access to that live episode uh, or the video of the live episode, as well as one free CE, and gain access to our full-length book club that we'll be doing on Between Now and Dreams in January 20. 20- 23, wow, then you can subscribe at uh, the $5 level or the $10 level if you want that book club podcast at patreon.com slash ABA Inside Track. All right, thanks, Diana, for being here. Uh, I noticed you did not get me a Secret Santa present, so I'm a little disappointed. <laughs> uh, I was, I didn't get the memo. Oh, okay. On that. That's I'll fine. give you a gift when it's actually... Uh, Santa Claus time. Okay, okay, great. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. I got you the nice book, but you know, whatever. <laughs> you know what my gift is going to be? Reading this book. Wow, thank you so much. <laughs> so you can be an active participant at the book club we record. <laughs> oh, wow, the, the gifts just keep on coming, huh? Yeah, you're welcome. All right, we'll be back with the first of those full-length episodes next week, but until then, keep responding. Bye! Bye!